Welcome to Skills for Success, Financial Literacy Part 2, presented by Big Brothers Big Sisters of NYC. My name is Varsha, and I'm excited to explore Financial Literacy Part 2 with you. Together, we will explore credit. In Part 1, Budgeting and Savings, we learned about key terms, practiced solving budgeting dilemmas, presented you with concepts and tools to build your budget, and reach your savings goal. Before we begin, please complete the pretest for Financial Literacy Part 2 if you haven't already. If you haven't watched Part 1, please stop this webinar and return to Financial Literacy Part 1. So, let's begin! For this two-part Financial Literacy lesson, we have broken Financial Literacy into three components, Budgeting, Savings, and Credit. This webinar will explore the third component of financial literacy, which is credit. First, what comes to your mind when you hear or think about the term credit? Do you think that credit is important to your financial goals? You may be wondering, what is credit? Credit is the ability of a customer to obtain goods or services before payment, based on the trust that payment will be made in the future. Basically. Can the people who lend you money trust you to pay them back? When you have good credit, lenders trust that you will pay them back with interest and see a low risk for not being paid back. When you have bad credit, lenders do not want to loan you money because they think it is likely that you will not pay them back. When we talk about credit, there are a few things we need to consider, such as a credit card. A credit card represents the line of credit you have with the credit card company. It is not a free source of money, you will have to pay the credit card company back, and it is different than a debit card. When you use a debit card, the money is deducted from your checking account. With a credit card, you're borrowing money to be repaid later. Though you are borrowing money to be repaid later, be careful because you can accumulate credit card debt. This happens when you spend more money than what you have. People who do not pay their credit card bills on time or do not pay the sum of what they owe accumulate interest on what they borrowed, causing them to owe more money than what they originally borrowed. Remember, it is easy to spend more than what you have in the excitement of getting a credit card. Credit cards can be useful, but only when you use them responsibly. In an emergency, it can help to have a credit card in order to make a large purchase quickly. For example, say you get a flat tire. You need to buy a replacement immediately, which means you cannot go to the bank and withdraw money from your emergency fund to pay for the tire. If you have a credit card, you can use the card to purchase the tires, then use the money from your emergency fund to pay your credit card bill later. You may want to make an online purchase from a business. Here you would need a credit card. You need to establish credit so that you can apply for a loan, finance a car, or take out a mortgage on a home. You could build credit by wisely using a credit card. You may want to earn rewards from day-to-day -day purchases like airline miles or cash back. However, if you plan to use a credit card for day-to-day -day purchases, you must be prepared to track your spending so that you aren't spending more money than you have or accumulate debt. Don't forget, credit cards are not free. Some best practices are keep track of your spending and pay your balance every month. Remember that your credit score is impacted by how much you use your credit card. Your card utilization rate is the ratio of your credit card balance to your credit limit. The lower your credit utilization rate, the better. Keep this in mind when you start swiping. On every credit card statement that you receive, there is a minimum suggested payment. Don't fall into the trap of paying only the minimum monthly payment. Pay your bill in full or pay more than a minimum, if at all possible. Every month that you do not pay your balance in full or close to full, you will owe the credit card company more and more in interest. 
Ultimately, if you cannot make your payments, the credit card company will lock your card so that you can no longer use it. APR or annual percentage rate is the interest rate for a whole year which is applied to a loan, mortgage, or credit card. For example, my credit card balance is $450. If the APR for my credit card is 10%, what is my monthly interest rate? First, you need to divide 10% by 12 because that will tell you how much your interest is per month. So, 10% divided by 12 is equivalent to 0 0.0083. Then, we multiply 0 0.0083 by 450 which is an equivalent of $3.75. So, APR is the price you pay for borrowing money. On most cards, you can avoid paying interest on a credit card if you pay your full balance each month. Now that you have some knowledge about credit, let's look at a scenario about a credit card bill that is past due. Pretend that you have a credit card with a $1,500 balance on it. Your bill is past due, the card has an APR of 13%, as well as a $10 late fee and a 2% minimum payment plus interest. How do we calculate interest? First, take 13% or 0.13 and divide it by 12 months. This means you owe 0.01083% interest on the balance each month your bill is past due. To determine how much interest you owe for this month, multiply 0 0.01083 times 1500, which is $16.25. Now, to calculate your minimum payment, multiply 2% or 0 0.02 by what you owe, which is 1500. This will equal $30. For this card, the minimum payment will be 2% of the balance, plus interest, plus the late fee. In other words, you owe $30 as your minimum payment, plus $16.25 interest, and $10 late fee. Now, your new balance each month is $56.25. You would at least need to pay $56.25 to keep your account in good standing. But this will affect your score in a negative way. Your credit card balance is still $1,470. How long it takes you to pay off that balance plus the interest all depends on your income and expenses. Here you can see how quickly overspending or not paying your credit card bills on time can spiral into serious debt. All of this matters because your credit score affects your ability to take out a loan, which you may need to buy a car or a house. If you have a bad credit score, you either won't receive a loan or will pay a high interest rate when you borrow money from the bank. You may be wondering, what impacts a person's credit score? Primarily, your payment history, but also your credit utilization rate and the length and quality of your borrowing history, meaning a long history of borrowing money responsibly and always paying what you owe yields great credit. A shorter credit history, during which you've opened many lines of credit, used credit cards until you've reached their limits, and failed to pay what you owe or pay on time, yields bad credit. Your credit score isn't everything but a low credit score can limit your opportunities. For example, if you need to obtain a private loan to cover the amount not covered by your federal student loan, you may not be able to obtain one with a poor credit history. This would impact your ability to attend college. You made it. Now you have the knowledge and tools to help you build excellent credit. You are ready to take the post-test in the Google Classroom and work towards your financial and personal goals.